Yeah. Hi everyone. So today I'm I'm sitting here with Rosa Lewis and I will have a chat about what, what is adult friendships and adult sort of relating looks like. And um Rosa has been in this I would say personal spiritual development field and embodied awareness. And well perhaps maybe uh Rosa you could kind of explain um what what you do and um yeah why you might be a good person to explore what what is adult relating yeah sure so um i guess i'm a spiritual teacher and that comes in different forms so i do some meditation teaching and um have a specific practice that i've created shared imaginal practice um i also do some coaching and various other things through that um yeah that support that I suppose and yeah in in a way I feel like a huge portion of what I kind of stand for and talk about is adult relating I guess it's almost like a way of really showing up in relationship and being able to be present and um bring in the full spectrum of your experience so include your emotions include your all your perceptions include everything don't kind of shut things down in yourself but also um create space for others to include that um so there's almost there's kind of like a yeah in in the development of things that's almost like the hardest space to reach is where that sort of interdependent fully adult relating space where everyone's being honest and true to their experience and staying in connection with others, not avoiding things like conflict or difficult parts of experience, but um, bringing them in in kind of wholehearted and skillful ways, I guess. Yeah, that sounds like the ultimate way of being in life, if you can sort of master that, I think. Um, would you share a bit about your journey towards this and like did you ever have like any challenges with this and like um yeah well how has it been for you and do you feel confident in in applying and embodying this in your own life currently yeah sure i guess it's sort of always been innately in me it's almost like i was born with the seeds of this where um i had quite a chaotic family system and i just always was the person who was like ah i'm the person who's responsible for making sure that the group is harmonious and so i would like sure i guess uh yeah take a lot of responsibility and kind of um over just like care take a lot um and then that in many ways made me like very happy I tended to be like likable people appreciated that uh, but I, I think everything has its shadows so then I would lose my own experience completely and just sort of like caretake everyone around me and then it would um yeah I'd bottle it all up and then it would come out like I'd get angry or something and it would all come out or um I just wasn't you know I'd get depression and things like that I wasn't because it was just like all the stuff was kept inside me um and yeah so my spiritual path actually started with doing some shadow work therapy and that um that really hit on this point in me which was like really getting in touch with some emotions and like other people holding space for me to feel my emotions and just being like oh yeah I'm allowed to feel my emotions too <laughs> that's important oh. <laughs> um and then since then it's almost just been like an endless it's just like an endless web of like shadows and blind spots and things it's almost like the yeah as we're relating to other people there's always things we can learn um yeah whether it's like showing up better for other people or like having boundaries and saying actually i really need to show up for myself and like just feel my own feelings or whatever there's yeah it can go in many different ways but um yeah does that answer the question is there more yeah 
Yeah. Mm. So, so, yeah, what you're saying, what I also hear a little bit in that is that it's, it's like an ever ongoing, evolving thing. Um, and yeah, what I, what I notice in, in, in my journey currently is that, um, I'm not always in that adult place. There's often uh, a boy sitting there, or or my gremlin is is taking over, and he's just, um, yeah, sort of wants to trigger or wants to um, avoid actually being vulnerable. Uh, has the he has the idea that he's vulnerable, but actually he's just kind of holding on a spiritual mask, or or for example. Um, yeah, maybe you could, could share a bit about, about these, um, yeah, about these sort of dynamics that, that show up or there, are there any certain patterns that always show up in the people you coach or like, what is like the most prominent, prominent of these? Mm, yeah, it's a great question. I think almost like one of the things I would say is these patterns come from almost always the thing they're trying to get is is love or connection like not sometimes there's some that are a bit rogue like some narcissistic ones that genuinely <laughs> don't want connection they just want to cause trouble um but mostly the parts want... they, can you sorry can you repeat that again they don't want connection they want yeah they want power or um, mm. and um but yeah the majority of people the majority of parts want connection and so it's just nice to um recognize that and recognize that, that that's they they either don't believe it's possible to get true connection so they found different ways to do it or um yeah so i always start from that place of just the kind of compassion um and then yeah i um i kind of intuitively keep in mind the four archetypes from from shadow work therapy which are the, the sovereign the warrior the magician and the lover yeah. and there's a way in which they're they're sort of like on opposing axes so you've got the magician and the lover and the sovereign and the warrior on opposites and if one is if one's been put into shadow by someone's family system or life or just because they were born like it it's like the other one will start overcompensating so if there's um not if like your lover like for me the lover was crushed that's kind of like my my ability to feel my own feelings and so i might become like over magicianed or over worried like i'll go out and i'll fix everything and make and change the situation to make myself feel better rather than just feel the feelings for example um so a lot of my path is like really just over and over again getting in touch with the lover part um but other people it might be the opposite way around they might be um under worried over sovereign um yeah that's that for for myself i i, I also work with these archetypes and for me mm -hmm. it's uh i have the tendency to 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 be over magician and you know start to keep always doing inner work and stuff and digging and and lacks a little bit of warrior so mm. like there's for me personally i need some more war i'm also like i'm a lover magician that has too much magician <laughs> in a way yeah. so it's like for me the ongoing challenge is to step more into my warrior and like really balance balance that out in that way yeah no, I, I wouldn't yeah. really know how that how that would relate to the, this context though because i i look at these archetypes as uh guidance for life so I, I map them all my life and then it's like mm -hmm. I, okay the king has a vision the magician is doing the inner work the warrior is making decisions and then the lover is the one that that relates and, and, and talks about the passion and the heart and you know mm -hmm. yeah i think there's a way in which it's like um relate you can relate from the different parts as well mm -hmm. maybe. um it, it, it is almost how I 
frame it it's like ah when I need to set boundaries I'm relating from the warrior when I'm like just talking about myself in a full and comprehensive way I want to be talking from the sovereign um and also like how I see other people as well like am I receiving your sovereign am I receiving your warrior which parts am I like open in open to receiving do you have any any habits or tools that you use to uh get into this I'm imagining like right before a call you kind of invoke the sovereign or the queen or whatever or how do you do that yeah it's a good question I think I just naturally am in it's more like I'm um, observing the flow of things and just sort of paying attention and if I notice if I'm in conversation with someone I'm up and I'm like like coaching someone or something and, and I notice like oh it seems like there's not much warrior coming through from them or something or um then I'll kind of yeah it's almost more like little flags going off in experience <laughs> if there's an imbalance um yeah I think I tend to I I maybe tend to to also when I'm coaching I'm quite I like to receive people's sovereign energy and, and like bring that maybe consciously I think there's a way in which it's like um it's almost like coaching from a place of really seeing the best in someone and wanting to bring that out in them rather than like a place a more magician -y place might be more like a problem solving space which I think can be helpful for people but uh, yeah I think maybe my style is like ah seeing the best and being and bringing that out um yeah yeah that's beautiful sounds sounds powerful that's um there's this this book i was reading about healing and it, it also says like when you're coaching somebody it's like look at what does what does the soul want to be witnessed in or express uh, have expressed through him right now and i kind of hear that in, in in what you're saying yeah mm, yeah. yeah nice yeah. I kind of feel like I want to open the space for making it a little bit personal more maybe mm -hmm. and just kind of because we've been doing uh, some work together for a few for a few weeks I guess or a few days just being back and forth and we already had one session together and you kind of know know me and and my system a little bit and and we're about to you're about to coach me in, into how I can relate better and, and and build more deeper nourishing connections. And is it an idea that we dive into a bit of that right here now or Yeah, yeah, happy yeah. to. Sure. And, and maybe you could share your view on like the archetypal way I'm relating and like currently and how do you see me evolve or yeah. Yeah, yeah. When I fill into those, I think what you said about strong magician lover, I think there's a way in which when that's strong and warrior sovereign is less strong, it's almost like the magician lover axis is more personal. It's more about like personal experience going really deep into that. Um, yeah. And then the warrior sovereign is more like collective or group level where warrior it's like um being part of a tribe or something is, is an important part of being a warrior it's mm. like being in it together and um yeah you're kind of like making sacrifice and compromise and things like that it, but it's like the benefits of that is that you're part of the, the the crew and that creates safety and like protection and um yeah the sovereign parts about like meaning and purpose and um yeah I guess the when that's healthy it's like the sovereign will be guiding the warrior into something that's that's meaningful rather than you know stupid battles for example <laughs> mm -hmm. um yeah so it feels like um I think an important part of it as well is with, with warrior energy is that yeah there's it's practical so there's something practical to apply it to 
it's almost like giving people actual physical steps of things like ah you could go out and try this you could do this like recording this video is a perfect example of like a thing that you're actually doing rather than that more sort of like introspective magician lover loop um yeah so that's some of the things that come up yeah what i'm what i'm hearing in that just kind of reflecting in my own words is like yeah, I don't, I, I don't know where we cut off exactly. Do you remember you were sharing? Yeah, I just finished sharing and then you were yeah. about to reflect your thoughts. So I don't yeah. know if you'd like to do that or if that feels like a good place. Yeah, yeah I just, I noticed... Um, I notice a desire. It's like a process of raising my awareness of how I can relate more from the adult space. And I just notice right now there's a desire to be able to do it, <laughs> to be able to relate from an adult way. I just don't really know uh, exactly my blind spots in this. So it's like I notice myself yearning for a kind of map that I can kind of pinpoint out like oh yeah adults um they don't ju judge each other or like adults they are um like sharing what's real and true and and not putting on masks or like yeah it feels so ungraspable for me currently maybe you could just kind of like add a, add a frame or some elements or some mm -hmm. structure to this experience of adult relating yeah i think there's something really important in what you were just saying where it's like ah uh, i think part of adult relating is the imperfection embracing the imperfection it's almost like the i think part of adult relating is like just showing up and doing your best <laughs> Mm. And it's like on the inside everyone, no one knows what's going on and they're all just sort of like getting around and trying to do their best and um, putting on different masks or like not saying what's true or doing because they're just like um, yeah it's, it's difficult I think it's important to recognize it's really difficult for people to, to relate and, and be true and um, so that feels like the first important thing from what you said and then it feels like, um, yeah, it's almost kind of like weighing up. When I feel into that, it's like as an adult, it's almost weighing up. It's like when you're in connection with people, it's just sort of like being able to survey the scene, listen to your inner world, like check in with yourself, see what feels true, get a sense of the group, like what are the boundaries here, what's safe. What do I need? What do other people need? Um, and then almost like taking all of that information in, in the best way that you can at the time, which is often like a diff that those things are difficult to do. And then like speaking from that place. Um, and yeah, I think part of that is like being things like I think one of the key things is having developing a bit of comfort with discomfort it's almost like if we're always looking for comfort that really takes us out of the adult place and puts us in a child place because we're just like looking around like ah oh, where can I get where can I be comfortable whereas if we can trust in our bodies and in ourselves that like uh, this interaction might be a bit uncomfortable in some way either for me or for the other person then you just buy yourself a bit of breathing room um similar to the imperfection thing just like it's kind of like a sense of just like okayness with like ah what's happening now it's okay and i'm just doing my best um yeah those things feel quite core cool to the adult model i would say yeah I, thank you for sharing that it feels like uh it opens expands my knowing in a way and um, what, what I would just add to that that resonated with me also is like 
in this uh, possibility management context that I'm, I'm currently explore, exploring, they talk about being willing to clean up messes. And like they say, adults clean up messes. So it's like, it kind of resonates with what you say about being okay with discomfort. It's like, yeah, you just, you're okay with being discomfortable and the idea that you could possibly make a mess, but then you also have this like, and if there's a mess, I just clean it up. And that's the adult responsible part. So it, I, for me, it, I could translate it to like having this kind of mindset allows you to really engage whether you're feeling discomfort or comfort because, you know, you'll be able to handle it. And if, uh, if shit hits the fan, you just clean up the mess and, and be adult about it. So. Yeah, I really like that. That's nice. Yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you for what you shared so far. Do you feel like there's anything we didn't touch upon yet that you'd like to share still when it comes to adult relating or maybe um, they call it, they, they have three levels in possibility management. They have um, child relating, gremlin relating or adult relating. I guess it's kind of intuitive uh, what, what it means. Uh, if not, I could I could explain them each at once. So. Yeah, I think that makes, no, that, that, that makes sense. And I think... Um... There's a kind of, yeah, like me maybe like a meta adult relating as well, where you can include the gremlin in a way that is, that is almost like as an adult, I'm now, I'm, I'm noticing that my gremlin's coming up and I want to say da, da 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 And then it sort of like, yeah, becomes more whole and inclusive rather than again, like the perfectionist of always having to be like an adult. Um, for sure yeah what feels fun to to inter interject here now is that like in the pm context when uh when the gremlin is coming up in a conversation we would just tell him to sit down so he'd be like anton sit down in the middle of a of a normal conversation with somebody you know or, yeah <laughs> yeah <that's> nice. <laughs> i like the play yeah. i like the playfulness i think that helps yeah. as well mm -hmm. um and then probably the other thing i would say is um yeah, there's a book that I recommend called "Having Difficult," how to how to have difficult conversations. I think, and that mm. was I found that um, yeah, I guess before I started the spiritual path, and it but it completely transformed how I related. I think it's um, similar to some skills that you learn in circling, um, but it just yeah goes into really into depth about how to communicate in conflict and. Um, yeah, conversations that are like stressful in, in certain ways. It's really good. So, so you're saying that's a, that's a nice uh, way to build tools for adults relating. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Specifically in terms of that, like com I guess being able to go out of the comfort zone, clean up the messes, that sort of thing. I think yeah. they just have yeah. lots of really clear like examples and tools and language around the skills you need to be able to do that great yeah i think we can can round it off here unless you feel there's something still important then no, no okay. thank you very much rosa for <laughs> having this little exploration with me yeah thanks it's been nice